Continue our coverage of the 2020 Scouting Combine in Indianapolis. Our next guest finished his second season as head coach of the Tennessee Titans with a berth in the AFC Championship. He is Mike Vrabel back on the program. Coach, congratulations. I mean, I know, I know you want to win it all. But sure. still, you got to be damn proud of what you've done in two years to get the team as far as it's come from two and four this year, making the switch to Ryan Tannehill, and it was fun to watch. Yeah, what I'm proud of is our players and their effort. Uh, and their finish and how they played and how they responded to a little bit of adversity. The one thing I'll, I'll be most proud of is this past season is that we didn't have a whole lot of front runners. Uh, when you start two and four, uh, it, it's real easy to, to start complaining and pointing fingers, and, and our guys didn't do that. Um, and, and, and nobody acted like a front runner, and, and I'll be proud of that. Well, that, that's a credit to you. I mean, that's kind of the aura you give off. So I think you uh, that's me trying to give you a compliment. But I appreciate also, it. Yeah, um, but also with your, your quarterback. Just mm -hmm. explain to that. Like, his attitude, the way he is, what, what made it work? Why did he fit, you know, and, and the things you're the, talking about? The thing about. I noticed early on is yeah. when we signed Ryan or, and we traded for him um, is he came in and, and you have to learn. I mean, you know, you've learned different systems. And, again, the, the plays, a lot of them are similar, but they're called something different, and that is very hard – to be able to to master the terminology, the looks, uh, the reads, the progression, the you know the, the run game, you know yeah. how we want to handle the run game, sure. the things that we want to can to, and how we want to manip manip manipulate our run game. Right. And he learned all that, and he supported Marcus, and I think that will be the thing that um, I'll look back and be, and be thankful for Ryan as he supported. Uh, he didn't agree with the role. Who would? Who would ever say I want to be a backup? Um, but he supported uh, that decision. Uh, and then when given the opportunity, um, he excelled. Um, his leadership uh, blossomed. Right. Um, and and that, that was something that I'll, I'll look back and be thankful for. When did you first start deliberating whether or not Ryan should be the guy instead of Marcus? The change was already made during the sixth game. Sure. When did you first have that, that, that synapse fire in your brain that maybe he should be the guy? Um, you know, always evaluating the team. I mean, you guys evaluate the show and what you like about it and what you don't like about no, it. No, we don't. No, he's well, still here. No, we don't. You, know, I, you guys put a lot of time in there. You guys, you guys have um, obviously improved um, in, in what you've done. But that's that's my job is to evaluate the things that we do well and try to continue that and enhance it, and then fix the things that we don't do well. Um, and, and we weren't doing a whole lot of things well, you know, and, and offensively at that point in time. And um, you know, just felt like we, we needed a spark and we needed all need to play better. What, what is it about his physical attributes that you really like? I mean, you know, he's a great athlete. He's got mm -hmm. size. His down the field throwing was off the charts this year. Um, I mean, you know, I, you know I, I, he really grasped the concept of how we wanted to play the football game and, yeah. and be able to run it, um, play pass, uh, take some shots. Uh, and then he helped us when, when protection broke down or we asked him to run. Um, you know, in the keeper game, he was able to get out on the edge and right. um, and, and extend plays and, and do some things down down the field. Um, I, I just I, I would feel cheated if I didn't ask you this, but like you know, just your thoughts. No, your boss would get mad at you. Oh, yeah, yeah, he might. Me. You're right. So <laughs> you calling him my boss over there? See, okay. he gets it. He knows. He knows how it goes. It's my work wife, Everybody, not my boss. Everybody, my everybody's wife. got a boss. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got a boss. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I do want to ask you just about the AFC Championship game. You got yeah. to see Patrick Mahomes twice this year. Just, you know, again, he's the man of the <coughs> moment right now. Just w what jumps out to you evaluating him and then seeing him in person on the field? Uh, you know, just his, his composure, I think, um, under under duress. You know, there were times that um, in both games that, that we either pressured him or, or had a guy free and he would drift and, and be able to throw to spots. Uh, down the field, you know, 15 or 20 yards right. in front of a receiver that he knew would, would be there. Um, it, it, you know, his, his ability to obviously extend plays um, cost us, you know, in the AFC Championship yeah. game, among other things. But, um, you know, when you have a, a, a quarterback that can stand in the pocket, can deliver the football in, uh, on time, and then also extend plays, it, it makes it hard to defend. Have you ever seen a quarterback who like floats backwards like he does? Like for you as a pass rusher, outside linebacker guy, like mm -hmm. is that weird? It, well, it's just difficult right. because you know you think you're gaining on him and you're really not. He's just drifting He's and continuing bringing you the up, arm so strength. Yeah, yeah, the arm okay. strength to to be able to throw the football um, without setting his feet is something that um, 
you know, is very impressive. Yeah. How do you strike the balance with your defensive players about treating a quarterback who chooses to run the ball like a running back? Because you had to be frustrated on that run to the end zone. Now, I know some of it is his athleticism and elusiveness, but I just feel like when a quarterback strays toward the sideline, sometimes defensive yeah. players, we, we, like they, they're they coached to hit him. They're, they're coached to hit him as hard as they possibly can, as legally as they possibly can. Um, but do, do you see what we see where sometimes it's he, I, I the quarterback do. strays toward the sideline, guys start to pull up? Or, or even a guy, you know, here's what happens sometimes. Guys slide, guys slide, guys slide. And then all of a sudden on the third or fourth one, they don't slide. Right. And guys are pulling off because, you know, we're, we're coaches a very fine line. Our guys are coached to go full tilt to the tackle. And uh, there, there's an element of judgment and composure as that play is ending, whether it's an offensive lineman, you know, finishing the guy over the pile or, or pushing the pile um, or a defensive player that's going after the quarterback. There, there's an element of, of a decision-making and, and a composure that they have to have when, when a, a mobile quarterback scrambles and then chooses to slide late like that. It's on the defender. Does it drive you crazy as the next defender? <coughs> It doesn't. I mean, that's the rules. I know. And that's what I we do. have to try to coach. And yeah. As long as we can coach it, as long as yeah. we can do our best to coach the player when they ask, Coach, what am I supposed to do? If I don't have an answer, that's a, that's a bad place to be in. I saw it happen this weekend in the XFL. I know you don't watch the XFL. I do. P.J. Walker. Yeah. Started to pull up at the sideline, slowed down. And just shot back inside. He's done some really yards. good things, hasn't he? Yes, I, I, he has. He able to extend plays. Cardell Jones, I watched him um, play the other day. Obviously, wanted to follow and see what Cardell did um, from from Ohio State in the time that we spent there together. But uh, certainly looked like PJ. Um, was exciting the other day. Are you watching that league with, like, keeping notes, telling guys, uh, John Robinson, hey, here's a guy maybe we want to take a look at? We'll evaluate it, and our guys, our scouts are, are watching those games. Um, you know, I was curious about the kickoff and, and what that may look like and if that's something that, that we would entertain as, as, as our league is, is something that you know, could help the game and make it better and obviously make it safer. Trust me, J-Rob's in charge. They're going to evaluate the XFL guys. I could tell you that for sure. What's the first conversation with Belichick like after you beat him in the playoffs? Um, it's a quick one. <laughs> <laughs> I just said thanks, Coach. The same thing I say. I say good game. I uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate you. And then, uh, and then when, you know, found Carter. Did yeah. you know about the loophole before he used it? And told the world about it. Did you yeah. know about that for loophole with delay a game and, uh, and all that? You stuff? know, yeah, we're we're very aware of what the rules are. Um, again, we're just going to play by the rules and um, try to when when we can, uh, you know, use them to our advantage. <laughs> I just thought it was so odd that he told the world. He used it in that. I think it was a Monday night game. Sure. Yeah, and because it, yes. it's like, hey, right. there may be some guys that don't know about this, and uh, you're you're flagging it, and it ended up getting used against him. But you already knew about it anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, you just we were never up big enough in the fourth quarter to be able to use it before in games. We're usually the ones that are in a one-score game. So when are you going to sign Ryan Tannehill? You know, with free agency, it's, uh, you know, it's a two-way street. Players have to want to be back, um, and then teams have to make decisions. And there's a lot of tough decisions that we have to make. And, again, appreciative of Ryan and what he did. And, and I know that John and his staff, is, you know, they're working hard to try to re-sign all our players that we went back. What about the other beast, 22, Derrick Henry? What's the thought there? I mean, for just if well, you the could. thought is he's just a you know, um, I felt like the thing that he improved on the most was his leadership. Yeah, and that's unique from a running back. I don't think, you know, guys like Eddie George are great leaders. I played with Eddie, and I can comment on that. But sometimes, you know, runners you just kind of hand them the ball yeah, and they kind of right. do their thing. Right. Um, but I felt like his leadership skills um, really, really grew throughout the season. You know, when right. when a play that we were putting in for a game. Maybe it didn't look great or we hadn't run it as many times and it didn't look great in practice. And Derek would be the one that say, hey, run it again. I didn't have to say anything. Guys got lined up and they, and they ran the play again. And so um, I told him that after the season. I said, you had a phenomenal year. You led the league in rushing. Uh, you carried this football team, but you improved as a leader. Right. And, and I don't want to um, you know, neglect that. You're yeah. one of the few teams that this question of whether or not there's going to be a new labor deal affects the most because if there isn't, you get a franchise tag and a transition tag that could be used for Tannehill and for Henry. Cowboys are in that same boat. Maybe the Buccaneers, depending upon what they do with Jameis Winston. Are, are you kind of hoping there isn't a new CBA so it's, it creates some flexibility? Uh, you know, all I want is best what's guys? best for the league and, and for the players. And having been, you know, on both sides, I know that when you do a deal, uh, it's got to be good, you know, for both people. Both people got to leave a deal uh, feeling like they got something out of it. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping 
as always, what's best for the league and what's best for the players. So I love coaching. I love coaching players, and I, I want to be around players as much as I can. Is there anything glaring that you could share with us or you just look at it and go, All right, I, I, this has to improve on our team next year? I mean, maybe you don't want to share it with us. but No, it's... we had 31 pre-snap penalties. Okay. So we complain about, you know, being poor on third down or needing to improve on third down. Uh, let's start there. Let's right. not start. Let's start there where instead of being in uh, third and seven, it's third and two. Right. Uh, or, you know, being able to convert and not be in long yardage situations. Yeah. So let's see if we can stay on sides and not move uh, until the ball moves. Yeah. Defensively, we got to get better in the red zone. We went from number one in the league to 31st. So I don't know why we have to figure that out. We have right. to coach better and we have to play better. Well, it's been a great run so far for you in Tennessee. We enjoy watching it and we wish you all the best. Appreciate it. Mike Vrabel, Titans head coach. He's a man. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Great seeing you. Yep. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.